ประธานและเป็นสมาชิกของอสถานที่นี้ก่อนอื่นผมขอแสดงความยินดีดีใจและความกระตันอยู่ต่อ,อู้ที่ใดมีความตั้งใจที่จะสนับสนุนการศึกษาและการปฏิบัติในพุทธศาสนาได้เข้ามาได้เข้ามาในสถานที่นี้แล้วได้มีโอกาสเดินดูสถานที่ก็คาดไม่ถึงว่าจะใหญ่ขนาดนี้และมีการกิจกรรมมากอย่างนี้ก็เป็นเป็นที่ประทับใจและชื้นใจที่มีผู้ตั้งใจศึกษาในพระพุทธศาสนาและนำมาใช้เพื่อเพื่อแผ่พระพุทธศาสนาไม่แน่ใจว่าจะได้ใช้ภาษาไหนมีเสนอว่าใช้ภาษาอังกฤษก็มีแต่ว่าอย่างว่าก่อนก่อนที่ที่พูดรบัญญายก็คิดว่าได้ใช้ภาษาไทยสักน้อยก่อนจึงเปลี่ยนเป็นภาษาอังกฤษ So it's an honor today to be here and to Uh, receive a uh, an honorary doctorate degree uh, uh, from this uh, institution. Uh, the uh, the the university here is far more extensive uh, and. Uh, Uh, say much much larger than I expected it would be. Uh, I didn't actually have any idea what I was coming to. Uh, so it's extremely pleasing to see the uh, development of an institution like this that is obviously well supported, uh, and also that there are. So many uh, students here, uh, both uh, from Thailand as well as from uh, so many different countries uh, in Asia and uh, further abroad. So it is uh, obviously a very important uh, place of learning and uh, a. Um, uh, So that it makes it even more of an honor for myself uh, to be uh, given uh, an acknowledgement and recognition uh, by this institution. So just to express my uh, appreciation and my my gratitude, I've been asked to give a uh, lecture on. Uh, The development of Buddhist psychology of mind uh, is how it's translated in English. Uh, the Thai is slightly different. การพัฒนาจิตจิตใจในสายตาพระตะวันตก So that uh, it'll be somewhat related to one of those topics. Uh, so the Uh, my own uh, <coughs> uh, relationship with uh, Buddhist studies is conditioned by 
uh, my teacher, Ajahn Chah, and uh, he was uh, a well-known teacher, leader in the uh, Buddhist world here in Thailand, and he uh, was also considered a great meditation master. He actually put quite a lot of emphasis on encouraging us to put down, put down the books uh, and to study our minds because he felt that uh, the heart of uh, the Buddhist teachings uh, is in the endeavor or the attempt to free the mind from suffering, uh, to free the mind from greed, hatred, and delusion. So he would, uh, he kept telling all of us, whether it was uh, Western monks or the Thai monks, uh, to learn how to put away the books and learn how to read the mind. And uh, so my own uh, background uh, is actually not very academic. Um, I uh, <coughs> spent a lot of time, and particularly I found it very, very helpful from the perspective of coming from the West and uh, having studied at university having grown up in a culture that is uh, very much focused on learning from books, uh, then to be able to live in a very simple forest monastery and just be with my mind, uh, it was torture. <laughs> because uh, there's so many ways we can keep ourselves busy uh, and, and keep ourselves distracted, uh, even if it's good things, uh, so that to um, learn how to be um, content with what we're experiencing is a very rare, rare gift to ourselves uh, and it opens the, opens the door for learning the heart of the Buddhist teachings because say, the Buddhist teachings um, keep revolving around and coming back to the, the Four Noble Truths. The understanding of, of, of suffering or of dukkha, its cause, the cessation of dukkha, and the path leading to cessation of dukkha. Uh, so that is an experience. Uh, it's not a theory. And uh, Ajahn Chah was oftentimes asked, uh, how can he have so many Western disciples because he couldn't speak English and uh, none of us could speak Thai, certainly when we first arrived. Uh, and it depended on his, on his mood, uh, how he would answer. Uh, uh, if he was in a very playful mood, I saw him answer one time. He said, teaching for lungs is not difficult, just like teaching buffalo. Pull them here, pull them there, sooner or later they learn. So, but he was pointing to experience, uh, point, pointing to experience. Um, another time he 
um, gave the example of having, it's like uh, he was drinking a cup of, of tea of hot water and he said that, uh, see this is uh, hot water uh, or when he said in Thai it's Nam Lon uh, but actually where uh, Ajahn Chah lived he said we don't call it Nam Lon either it's Nam Han because the northeastern dialect is very different and then in Chinese it would be something different Cambodian it would be something again something else uh, and so that language doesn't necessarily uh, clarify what we're what we're pointing to so and this is the the nature of the Buddhist teachings uh, is that it's not so much trying to learn the words for things said but said it's when you can like stick your finger in this warm water this hot water then you'll know what hot water is uh, then it's an experience and you don't have to have language for it so the Buddhist teachings are like that uh, it's about the experience of happiness and suffering it's about the experience of peace and confusion and of course it's for creation of peace developing of happiness and well-being uh, developing of wisdom and understanding and the the words for it are not so important what is important is the experience so that to pay attention to that so that all of you are here as uh, students, some people are here as Ajahns, and uh, to, to not forget the, uh, the experience of what it is for, uh, what the purpose of it is, because the, um, uh, it's easy uh, it's easy to forget, as I said, uh, as human beings, we're um, extremely adept at distracting ourselves uh, and uh, to uh, forget. Uh, that's when we think of the, the word, like just to forget or to be, uh, just to get distracted. And it's like the the word, let's say the, the, the admonishment of the Buddha at the very end of his life, his very last teaching. Vaya Dhamma Sankarla Apama Dena Sampadeta. So that they're saying that they, they say all conditioned things are in a process of, of degeneration. And this is the nature of things uh, but to to establish this quality of heedfulness of care to not forget to not get distracted to be present with what we're doing so in terms of a especially when we think of a Buddhist psychology of mind this quality of heedfulness uh, is essential. Uh, a cultivation of care, of attention, of being very circumspect and present with what we're doing and developing a continuity of that. Uh, because sometimes we we can uh, say be, yeah, distract ourselves uh, with, say, with knowledge or, or accomplishments. Uh, so that the, uh, uh, I remember one time uh, Ajahn Chah, because many, many, many times uh, we would, uh, as disciples of Ajahn Chah, we would be asking him questions, wanting to get answers, wanting to get clarification, 
wanting him to tell us how to practice, how to live our lives as Buddhist monks. And, uh, and he'd get, uh, I remember one time he was particularly, I think maybe overwhelmed or maybe even a bit frustrated because it was just the, just endless questions. Uh, and uh, I remember him saying, ah, you Westerners, you're just like vultures. Uh, you can fly really high, but look what you come down to eat. <laughs> so, hmm. Oh, Jap, no. <laughs> so that, you know, it's a very, very, very forceful. Because it's sort of like that in the sense of, yeah, if you can think really high thoughts and you can, can collect all sorts of information, whether it's about the world or whether it's about about philosophy or religion, uh, but we have to pay attention. What do we come down to nurture ourselves with? What do we eat, in the sense of what do was what do our eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind? What do we look for our sustenance and 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 what grabs our interest? And if it's associated with with greed, hatred, and delusion, then it's going to create pain for ourselves and it's going to create problems for others. So that to uh, that's this, this uh, recollection of lifting up the mind uh, towards that which is really wholesome and skillful uh, and uh, lays a foundation for uh, our well-being and, and happiness. This is a, uh, an, a very important piece of the uh, uh, foundations of our, of our practice. Uh, the, um, when we think of the, the, say, the study of Buddhism, um, the, the Buddha um, So the word that the Buddha used uh, is psikha, uh, and so that this is, say, normally we think, okay, this is study or learn. Because even in the, uh, like in say in the, in Sanskrit, psikha is uh, siksa, and it's in the Thai language then it's it's just it's. Uh, uh, just using that same word as meaning to, to study, to learn, uh, to be a student is a naksuksa. Uh, so many of you here are all naksuksa. Um, and, but the, the, oftentimes I think what we s start to make assumptions of the, when we think of study, um, we think of it as a, uh, say, like an intellectual knowledge uh, or um, a knowledge of a particular um, area of learning. But for the Buddha, the, to study meant to, to train, uh, to train our body, our speech, our mind, so that the so that dry sikha, the three areas of training, uh, are what lay the foundation for our, our understanding uh, that leads to um, a, uh, a freedom of mind, a freedom of heart. Um, so to, to pay attention to this training of our body, speech and mind, and the, uh, this is the aspects of, of sila, of samadhi, of banya. Um, one of the places that I uh, visited on my tour of the university uh, was a, a large building which is the, say, for the vipassana tour. And uh, sometimes it's easy to compartmentalize um, what we're doing, and there's sort of like 
meditation is something different than study. Uh, but from the Buddhist perspective and from a Buddhist psychology of mind, uh, all of the things that we do, uh, of course that's the first verse of the Dhammapada, is mind is the forerunner. Uh, and and uh, But then it's the forerunner for all of our actions. But then it also, uh, the, the opposite effect is true as well. Our actions then affect our mind. Uh, the heart is affected by what we say and what we do. So that to recognize that our training or our study or our learning uh, always has to be about the development of the uh, aspects of uh, of the whole path sila, samadhi and panya. Uh, meditation uh, is uh, is a an aspect uh, of the path uh, and uh, but it has to have a context and and the cultivation of the whole path is what really transforms the mind. Um, the, uh, when uh, my teacher Ajahn Chah went to visit America, he, uh, he was asked to lead a, a meditation retreat at uh, a meditation center in Massachusetts. And it was a 10-day meditation retreat. People were focused on practicing meditation. And uh, Ajahn Chah was very perceptive uh, and uh, it intu it had a great intuition of where people uh, are coming from. Uh, and what's motivating them, and uh, he he felt that people were 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 very diligent in their meditation, uh, but he uh, in one of his teachings toward the end of the meditation retreat, uh, he 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 kind of admonished them and said, uh, "You're practicing the Buddhist teachings." Uh, like a an intelligent thief, uh, so that I said, oh, what's he mean by that? He said, he said like a an intelligent thief uh, goes out and steals and does uh, uh, robbery and whatnot, um, but eventually you get caught. But you're intelligent, so then you hire a really good lawyer, and then you get off. But then you're still a thief, so you go back to your old ways and you get caught again. And then you hire a good lawyer and you get off again. So he said, it's like, he said, it's like people coming to meditate and once their lives get complicated and difficult, uh, they are feeling some kind of suffering or stress. Um, and then they come and rely on meditation to make themselves feel better again for a little while. But then you go back and do the same old things. Uh, so then he says, it's, it's so that it's like, it's just like the intelligent thief. So he said, it's much better to learn how to bring the aspects of meditation, cultivation, training into all aspects of our life. So that the whole path is something that we keep applying uh, in all of the things that we do. Uh, learning how to develop the aspects of virtue and integrity uh, in our actions of body and speech. Uh, to, be, to be really clear uh, about what our uh, intentions are. And this is something that Ajahn Chah said, one of the great benefits of sila uh, is understanding volition, understanding intention, understanding the mind that 
the, what motivates us, what pulls us. Because the sila is like a, a mirror that reflects back for us. What's, what's pulling our minds? What's conditioning us? Uh, because until we, we understand uh, those, that, that intention, the volition in our minds, then you will keep repeating actions and some of it might be good, but some of it might not be good. Uh, some of it might be wholesome, some of it might be unwholesome. So that to really learn uh, what motivates, what, what, what is the, the, the impulses within the mind and the conditioning of the mind. So that it's not just a meditation practice, it's a, a cultivation of all the aspects of our, of our life. Uh, the same with the meditation itself. Um, as we cultivate meditation and mindfulness, uh, it always has to have an element of uh, integrity within it. Uh, Nowadays, it's getting very popular in the West to want to have meditation retreats for corporations. Um, Google is, is they encourage their uh, people to, they bring in teachers to teach meditation, teach mindfulness. Um, other large corporations uh, do the same thing. But, uh, I'm kind of suspicious that it's more motivated by if we can get people to have less stress, then they can work harder for us and put in more hours. And it's not really uh, that concerned about, about uh, human beings' real well-being. Uh, that's my own bias. but. Uh, but then also there's, there's uh, say, m mindfulness being taught uh, in places uh, like the military, uh, where they're really training, uh, American military, where they're really training people in mindfulness techniques so they can be better snipers. I don't know if that's a good use of mindfulness. <laughs> there's no moral element there. That, so it's not... Uh, the, these are not separate uh, from a Buddhist, say, from a Buddhist psychology of mind. We have to look at the whole person, the whole being, and learn how to. What is it that's really going to develop freedom from suffering for oneself and for others? Uh, so that, uh, and that's really, that's wisdom, uh, that's discernment. Um, but I think also one of the aspects of, say, this word banya uh, in English, um, the when we use the word wisdom, sometimes we think of it as something fully formed uh, or like a piece of knowledge, a piece of understanding. But um, the 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 word discernment is actually really a good translation in English because what it means, because even, say, like in the, in the Pali, the word banya is an, I mean, it, it's a noun that comes from a verb, pachanati, to know, to understand. And if we forget the verb, that there's an action to be engaging in, then we start, the, the, the aspect of wisdom starts to become something static or that we're not engaging in. It's something that we're idealizing that we have to try to get or gain. Uh, but we have to learn how to apply discernment. We have to learn how to cultivate and engage in the investigation, reflection, discerning capability of the mind uh, in order for the path of the Buddhas to, to really uh,
to grow and to develop. So again, in terms of this a Buddhist psychology of mind, you're looking at something that uh, things work together. They're, they're supporting each other. Uh, so to, uh, as we are in your life as students here, uh, to, you know, to rec recollect and remember, uh, to engage in the reflection and investigation. What are the teachings for? What's its purpose? Why am I, why am I bothering to study? Uh, and recognize that the opportunity to develop Buddhist knowledge is to develop ourselves as human beings that are uh, steeped in those qualities of, of, vir of integrity, of virtue, of clarity and discernment. So that I would encourage each of you uh, to, yeah, to, to recollect and to, to give yourself that, that encouragement uh, so that, yeah, to not get lost in the natural distractions that are a part of the, the human habit. So I'll offer that for reflection today and just to leave with that encouragement and again my appreciation and gratitude uh, for the institution uh, to have given me the honor of a uh, an honorary doctorate program.